1910 Buick. Yes, that's the two cylinder. Oh. I like the spare plugs up there. That's pretty cool. The one question which I have is why is the magneto connected to them? Let's find out. I went down with him for he's seventy-five years old. So, Brenda, you were saying about the, uh, uh, that's a four-cylinder magneto? Four-cylinder mag, which is what came on the car when we got it. Yeah. And uh, it worked for, I don't know, seven, eight years or so, and then it needed to be rebuilt. Yeah. So we uh, took it to get it fixed. The man said, what are you putting this on? He said, my two-cylinder Buick. He said, well, it's just going to burn up again because it's for a four-cylinder car. So Joe rigged that up to... Kind that's of brilliant. Extra, extra, extra juice. out of it, is that how you would say? Yeah. yeah. Well, look at it this way, is that when the um, magneto burns out for the uh, working two, you just swap it over with the non-working two. Oh, there's that too. So it sounds good to me. Yeah. Now, how long did Buick stick with two-cylinder? Well, this was Buick's almost their economy car that they built in 1910 yes. and 11. Um, I want to say they built the four-cylinder, or the two-cylinder Model Fs up until maybe 1912, I think. Joe? Well, how long did you build the Model F? Like 1912 or so? Yeah. yeah. By that time, a two-cylinder car was not the hot setup right. anymore. Had to go over to four, of course. And they were forced into it. But this is really the backbone of General Motors right Buick here. Buick was, yes. Buick was the heart of the first brand in General Motors. Yes. Yes. David Dunbar Buick. Yep. Well, Buick had nothing to do with it once he couldn't get the car... Uh, yeah, the he, mark he off the, the... He sold the company. Yeah. He started in 05 and he sold it either in 5 or 6. I think it's 3? Um, no, I think at first... Well, by 5 he'd sold it then. He did oh, not, yeah. No, he and, he couldn't get it off the ground. Yeah, he did not have... Uh, but he sold it and he thought he made a good profit on it. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I think he's one of those guys that died penniless. But, uh, yes, it unfortunately. He General Motors for yeah. a lot of years. So. He had developed the overhead valve... Uh, system on here. He was really a brilliant uh, engineer. Unfortunately, he's a lousy businessman. He did better with his bathtubs. Yes. Now, this car is not overhead valve. It's the only Buick that's not overhead valve. This is not overhead valve? Not overhead valve. Oh my gosh, it's a flabby. I thought all Buicks were overhead valve. Uh, well, from, from what I read, in 1908, they saw the Model T coming, Yes. and Buick said, well, we need a smaller economy car. It took them two years to bring this out. Mm -hmm. They sourced the engines outside the company. That's why. And, but by 1910, who would want this when you could buy a Model T for right. not much more money, and it's a lot more car? Right. So they built this car for two years, and uh, then that was the end of it. It was the economy car. Mm. So the Model F must have been a real rarity. How many did they sell? Um, a lot more of the Model Fs. Yeah. Model, it was a bigger car. It was a big, big sturdy car for its time. Mm -hmm. um, wouldn't outrun or out durableness a, a Model T. Right. But it was, it was, you know, Buick was the top selling car in 1907, 1908. Yes. But, uh, and they started building four-cylinder cars by 1910, I think. But they still made the two-cylinder until I, I, wow. I'm not sure if it was 12. I think it was 12. Hey, it's bearing Cadillac. Cadillac stuck with the single for a long, long time yes. into the odds. Until they jumped up to the four. And they, when they went big, they went big. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah that's for sure. Okay. That's for sure. Thank you very much. Oh, sure. I appreciate it. This has the planetary transmission, I presume? No, I'm sliding no, not gear. planetary. Sli sliding gear. Oh, very nice. Two gears. That's advanced, slow one for each cylinder. Slow and slower. Slow and slower. I what love is it. Top speed? 30, 35, no, it likes 25. to go along around. Well, the thing is, it's nice to do 25, but how about the steering shimming and the brakes? Kind of. <laughs> this is beautiful. I'm going to sneak in. Excuse me. Thank you. Just want to show you the oiler. That's really pretty cool. You can see with the way how it goes for all the oil points and such. There's your shifter and handbrake. 
course, it only has brakes in the rear. That is cool. Again, 1910 Buick model. 14. So what do you guys think? The only Buick with a flathead.